And Jesus said, I have told you this while I was still with you. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, that the Father will send in my name. He will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have told you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. Not as the world gives to you. I do not let your heart be in trouble and be afraid. You heard me saying to you, I go away and I will come back to you. If you love me, you will rejoice that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it happens, so that when it happens, you will believe. I will no longer speak much to you, for the rulers of the world are coming. He has no power over me, but the world must know that I love the Father and that I do just as the Father has commanded me. Get up, let us go. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be the Lord Jesus Christ. Your word is a lamp for my feet and the light for my path. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you. My dear brother priests, my dear young sisters and brothers in Jesus Christ, at the World Youth Day 1905, which was held in Cologne in Germany, Pope Benedict XVI gave a wonderful homily at the end on transformation. I would like to bring that to you, what he told the youth there, which he would tell you also today. Knowing that Jesus was about to die, how did Jesus go about? He transformed. The first transformation was changing death to life. He would die, but he knew he would rise again. It was violence, his old passion, the scourging, crowning with thorns, the crucifixion, the hammering of the nails into his hands and feet. He transformed violence into love. For he loved to the very end. So he transformed death into life. He transformed violence into love. That was the first transformation. The second transformation was he anticipates his death already at the Last Supper. And he transforms bread and wine into his body and blood to be with us as long as the church lasts till the end of time. He transformed that bread and wine into his body and blood and set forth a whole series of transformations. He is always and everywhere. People in the world expect a transformation. We're always grumbling if you take our newspapers, the crimes that are committed, the rapes that have been committed, the exploitation, all this comes in the newspapers. And people want the world to change. Often we don't realize it has to start with me. If I change, you change, the world can change. Let us not wait for governments to change the world. They are too busy with power, money and all that. So the Eucharist is the central act of worship, the highest form of worship in the world. And the Eucharist Jesus gave us to transform the world. That we, by receiving the Eucharist, get transformed. That is, then the third transformation, this must go on. Changing violence into love, death into life, 
changing bread and wine into his body and blood, now he wants to transform us. That by receiving Holy Communion, we should be transformed. And we, not only as for ourselves, we should be leading others to Jesus, leading them to Christ. So we also have a part in the transformation. First be transformed ourselves, but let us not keep Jesus for ourselves. Because whoever received Jesus, like St. Paul, the most violent or fanatical persecutor of the church became the greatest proclaimer of the faith. He lived only for Christ and to lead people to Christ. So through us, the love of Jesus must spread out to others. It has often happened that poor people who were helped by someone you know, have asked, are you Jesus? They have heard about Jesus, they have heard about his love, how he helps. And when they see someone who is so selfless, helping, they are, are you Jesus? And this is a true story. If you have traveled in Bombay, the locals come crowded. The local trains, they are so frequent. But you cannot get in because there are people, so many people getting out. And those trying to get in are swept out by the crowd. And one lady saw an old woman trying to get in, pushed out, get in, pushed out. So she went to her and helped her to get into the train and traveled with her. She asked her, where are you going? And when that station came, she helped her to get out. Because sometimes it is more difficult to get out because other people are trying to push in. And she left, helped her to get out and saw that she was comfortable and would go where she wanted to go. And that old woman asked her, are you Jesus? This is what people have to say to us. It has been said if the Bibles of the world, all the scriptures, all our Bibles are destroyed, people should be able to write the Gospels looking at our lives. At the end of the Mass we say, go in peace. And give delight to God by your life. Transform the world by your life. Go, the Mass is ended, doesn't mean now go. You have finished your Sunday obligation. Go for your shopping, go for your brunch, go for this and that. Yes, go. But take Jesus into the world. We have to take Jesus into the world to transform the world because we become one with him and the Eucharist has to be the center of our lives. That's what I said. What is the high point of each day? It is the Eucharist. And at times when I'm at seminars and conventions, it pains me to see now we have the whole program. We have to discuss this, we have to discuss that. And then we say, where will we fit in the Mass? Somewhere we must say the Mass, fit it in here or there. Sometimes late in the evening, we have not had the Mass, let's have Mass now. The Mass has to be the high point of each day. Wherever it is that we give the greatest importance to the Mass. And it is Jesus who will help us in our discussions through the Holy Spirit. Without Him, I can do nothing. And that should be in our lives also. So the Eucharist will give us the strength, the impulse to know Jesus all right. The sacramental Jesus is not with me. The Eucharistic Jesus, his presence lasts for some time, but it is not permanent. But he is with me. I am with you always till the end of time because the Holy Spirit is with us. That is the beautiful 
Trinity that we worship. It is Jesus who told us about the Trinity. The Spirit was not known as a person. Jesus, through his preaching, manifested that the Holy Spirit is a person. He is our advocate. He is our helper, consoler, all that. And so let the Eucharist be for us the high point of our lives. If we go daily, of the daily life, you go for Sunday, for Sunday life. The Mass is so important. Sunday is the day of creation, according to our tradition. It's the day of creation, it's the day of redemption, it's the day of the Lord. It's always been held very sacred in the church. If I ask you, how many days are there in Lent? What is your answer? How many days? 40 days. Go to your calendar and see. Ash Wednesday to Holy Saturday is 46 days. Somewhere we have gone wrong, no? 46 days and we say 40 days of Lent. Because there are six Sundays in Lent. And Sunday is never considered a day of Lent. In Latin we say dies dominica. That means the day of the Lord. Sunday is the day of the resurrection and the church even in Lent keep Sunday as the day of the resurrection. It's not counted as a day of fasting. In all those days where they fasted for 40 days, Sunday was not included. Because Sunday is always the day of the resurrection. The day of redemption when whole of creation was renewed. Then the Holy Father went on to say, we must learn to love the Eucharist and we must learn the Eucharist should lead us to the sacrament of reconciliation. Reconciliation is not there to say I've sinned greatly. It's an encounter. Every sacrament is an encounter with the Lord. There's the story of St. Francis of Assisi a saint. At one time of his life, he went to confession every day. I read that as a seminarian and I said, why did he trouble the poor fathers? What did he have to tell them? But then I realized as I grew older and I hope little wiser, why he went for confession every day. See, we priests in India, we wear white cassock. You wear a white cassock. If there's one dot on that cassock, people say, Father, there's something on your cassock. I had a brother who's a Franciscan. He has passed away. I used to envy him. He had a brown cassock. And if the 10 dots, 20 dots, 100 dots, nobody sees that. Because that background is such. So the purer, whiter, the background is the more you see even the smallest dots. And so the closer we come to God, when we see how holy he is, all holy, and even the small faults of ours, they stand out. Lord, I have sinned against you. I could have helped that person. I did not. I could have said a good word to this person. I did not. See. That's why St. Francis used to go for confession every day. Every day he realized, I failed the Lord here. The people would have said, that's no sin. But compared to the purity, the holiness of God, he realized, I'm so far away from God. And so that leads us, the Eucharist, when we come to know the holiness of Jesus, the holiness of the Father, the Spirit, then we realize, how sinful we are. When Jesus entered the boat and told Peter, he preached from, the, from that boat and then told Peter, now you cast your nets. 
they had cast the nets the whole night. And Jesus was a carpenter and Peter was a fisherman. He could have told him, mind your business. I know I am a fisherman. But he said, at your word, he cast out the nets. And there was such a haul of fish, they had to bring their friend's neighboring boat to haul in the fish. And then Peter fell at the feet of Jesus and said, depart from me for I am a sinner. And my question is, why did he not say that when he, Jesus entered the boat? Don't come into my boat, I am a sinner. Because through the haul of fish, he realized this man is a special man. This man is a holy man. And seeing his holiness, his powers, he fell at his feet. So when people say, no, I have nothing to confess, that means you are quite far away from the holiness of God. So Benedict says, this must also lead us out to help people. We must know our faith. This is the year of faith. Now you have the Vatican Council 50 years ago, you have the Catholic Catechism of the Church, the CCC. They may be more difficult for you to read, and so Pope John Paul II entrusted Cardinal Ratzinger, who then became Benedict XVI, to bring out that Catholic Catechism in a question-answer form. You know, that is a form that you can read that book. But they went still further, they brought out the youth catechism, which is meant for youth. That book you must have, and that book you must really know, study, because you must know what it means to be a Catholic. And Benedict told then the youth, go out, go out to the people, serve the people. Our holiness is nothing if it doesn't lead out to help people. Jesus we call a man for others. Very simple definition, a man for others. We should be known also as persons for others, always ready to help, always there. And he pointed out especially those who are neglected, the old, the weak, the lonely, to have a heart for them, to go out for them. So let us not forget, today there is an explosion of religion, he said. It will become also a consumer product. That is the religion of wellness. The prosperity gospel, ask God for anything, he will give it to you. You want a Mercedes car, ask him for it. They are drawing crowds of people. So there's an explosion of religion. No? But people want to find out where is the true religion and we have that obligation and so then benedict ended by telling them the star let the three wise men to jesus you be the stars that following you people can come to jesus people can find you and people will be always happy that you have been their star leading them to Jesus.